So in many senses, this idea of data cleaning used to be less of a problem. Because, you know, when I was in graduate school, you would go to the museum and write down the data element by element, filling in each field. And if something looked strange, you would check it right then because you had, you know, in my case, the dead bird in your hand, or in your cases, the herbarium sheet. But you were writing down or you know, later on typing into a data set element by element. And you were really paying attention to each of those fields. And in many senses, you know, there, obviously there were people who weren't careful. But if you were thinking and caring about your data, you did a lot of this, this process that we're going to talk about today automatically. You'd say, what? There's no record of that species from that place. Or I've never seen one with a red head. Or this looks like the Western form, not the Eastern form. And you would be doing this along the way. Now, at present, the world has changed. You each can do a query in a second and get a data set in 15 minutes that is you know, the plants of Zimbabwe, the plants of Uganda, you know, you can do that in nothing. And so all of a sudden you have 10,000 records sitting in your computer. And it's very tempting to say, okay, I've got my data, let's start analysis. Let's start playing with the data, let's, let's do science. But by doing that, you are trusting people you've never met to take care of your data. And you don't know whether you should trust those people or not. You don't know whether they did it really quickly and without much care. Or maybe they did it with a lot of care, but you don't know. And the, the situation gets worse and worse. Um, with one of my graduate students, I did an analysis a few weeks ago that was just a niche model of a single species. And I went to GBIF to download the data, and there was 1.5 million records of one species. And I don't have the time or energy to review a million and a half records, right? Or I'm in a project right now that's working on the digital knowledge of the birds of the world. And the 2014 version of that data set is 210 million records, okay? My poor computer can't even load the data set. And so, how do you do it? Do you just trust people? Do you trust, you know, 500 data managers to be doing their jobs and to be doing their jobs in the same way as the other 499? Bad idea. Okay? And if you don't do this, you're going to get into trouble. You're going to get into a situation where Errors appear and problems and inconsistencies appear in your data set. So the idea is, even though we would love to um, just jump in and start working, we really have to do some careful thinking and exploring and assessing our data in advance before we do the fun stuff. And almost all of you have seen me take your data set and send you back a report that says, uh, you need to fix this and, this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And that's something that I do with myself, I do it with my students, I do it with everybody, and you have to learn to do it yourself as well. Um, essentially, we have two tools 
internal consistency and external consistency. And so I'm going to give you very quick examples of both of those. And then actually, after um, Arturo gives you a, a discussion of taxonomy, I'll come back with a couple examples and talk about geography. So let's get some generalities out. Error is everywhere. Okay, you know the principle of entropy. Um, just error will enter and mess up any order just by the nature of things. So data cleaning is a positive step that improves the, the readiness and utility of a data set. Um, but, and this is one of my favorite complaints about colleagues around the world, is that the existence of error is not an excuse to not share or integrate or make available your data. Rather, the existence of error is one of the best reasons that you should share your data. Because when your data are being used, people find problems and they tell you about them. Okay? But this is a very, very common excuse. Oh no, we can't share our data quite yet because we haven't finished cleaning our data. Well, guess what? You will never finish. Okay? There will always be error in your data set somewhere. Ten years from when you think you finished, you'll still be finding errors. But we can minimize <coughs> errors. We can, especially if we have a particular use of the data, we can do a series of procedures that at least reduce the frequency of errors or signal the possible uh, existence of errors. And just a last note, if somebody says they have a clean data set, they don't, okay? So what are the general strategies? Well, we're gonna use this tool of consistency. Okay, that's gonna be the really critical thing. If you tell me that you saw a lion here on the hotel grounds, that is a biodiversity data point. If the date attached to it is 2015, it's probably wrong. But if the date attached to it were 1615, it might even be right, okay? So we're gonna look for consistency both inside the data record and outside the data record. Especially where we have multiple sources of information, we're gonna make use of all of them and we're gonna ask whether they disagree. Okay, that's the idea of consistency. Um, external consistency gives us perhaps a more powerful view. And yes, when we correct errors or when we detect and flag errors, we're going to throw out some good data by accident. But that's, that's something that's usually un unavoidable. And so what this process is, is an iterative process of exploring the data, visualizing the data, either correcting errors where you are sure that you know what the problem is, and I'll show you some examples, or flagging data records as probably having errors that you can't correct, so that those data records don't get used in analyses that will depend on information that might be wrong, okay? And then the last step, is documentation of what you did. And for example, for the purposes of this course, that documentation takes the form of the methods section of a published paper. And I've, you've seen me developing usually a Word document that lays out, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. But when we're doing truly archival improvement of data sets, then those, let's call them metadata about how the data records were improved, those have to be in the data set. So you don't just add a latitude longitude coordinate to a data record. You add latitude longitude 
you add some uncertainty, and also you add how you got those data. Okay, what was the source and what was the methodology? Without that metadata, that latitude longitude coordinate is close to worthless. So you have to document what's being done. That's crucial. So we need to make a little bit of a difference between flagging and fixing. Okay? It's pretty easy to figure out a set of records that probably have problems. But it can be a lot more difficult to estimate, figure out, understand what the problem is. It may simply be that the preparator a hundred years before was falling asleep and forgot to write something down. And so the information needed to fix the error may just not exist. Just may not be there. So for certain applications, what we can do is just throw out records. So I was talking with Alex yesterday about the University of Ghana data set, and not so much because of errors, but because of missing data, <coughs> the data set went from 50,000 records to 25,000 records. Half the data get left out of the analysis, okay? That's for a single application, and we're gonna describe that. But those 25,000 specimens in the University of Ghana herbarium are still specimens, they're still useful, and they still exist. And so when we do kind of more curatorial applications, like Alex wearing his hat, not as scientist, but as curator, he's going to approach those data not as far as just throwing them out, but rather he's gonna signal, oh, um, we don't have a date for this record. Or the geographic coordinates fall outside of this state, but the data record says it's in this state. There's a conflict. I'm not picking on University of Ghana, but this is the example that I had worked up. Um, I can do this with any of the data sets around the table. So when we, when we wear our, our curator hats, you know, when we do archival work with data, we're not throwing out data records, we're just qualifying them. We're saying, oh, be careful of the geographic reference here, or be careful of the date here, because it's got a problem. I can't fix it, but I know it's in there somewhere. And so those are very important records that may be useful for some other application. They may be fixable at some other point in time. Or it may just take more work than you are able to put into it at the moment. Okay? So that's the difference between flagging errors, which is pretty easy, and fixing errors, which can be really difficult. And in my talk in the second half of the morning, I'm going to give you some interesting examples of that. So again, I want to just talk very briefly about internal versus external consistency in biodiversity data.